Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen, All In Crypto here, and welcome back, guys, for another daily cryptocurrency market update. If you are new around here every single day at 1 p.m. UK time, we release an update just like this one to help you stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space but also the broader markets. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be starting things off with quite an interesting um, filing to come out of Terraform Labs this week in regards to them blaming and levying allegations against Citadel Securities uh, in relation to the collapse of UST, which of course was Terra's uh, stablecoin and really a, a central part to Luna's entire operation. You know, Luna is a significant part of crypto's history, uh, just like BitConnect was and all these other kind of catastrophes. And of course, it, it, it shaped the landscape moving forwards. Um, so this is really interesting. And we are going to be diving into this to start the video off, looking at the kind of uh, official filing that was made, um, which was on the 10th of October. And then we'll look a little bit at where we are in regards to spot ETFs. And I think there's a lot of uh, um, progress being made, although slowly. Uh, and then, of course, we'll dive into housekeeping, you know, really at the end of last week, Friday, and certainly going into Monday, we did say actually risk could get a bid based on how the dollar closed last Friday. Uh, and the stock market has thus far, uh, so has gold, crypto really not so much. And actually with what took place yesterday, which we're of course going to be diving into heavy economic day, um, we saw the dollar really gain a lot of strength. And of course, um, we saw risk get hit, most notably the bond market. I think the reason the dollar is gaining strength is because you had the Fed bid exactly $0 on the 30-year bond auction, which means that they are still very much not willing to step in, despite the kind of pain that we're seeing in the bond market, which is ultimately causing a lot more uncertainty for markets, which they don't like. So we've got a lot to cover on that end. We've also had CPI, and we'll look at how this is affecting forward guidance for rates. But let's start things off with some really interesting news. Yesterday, or a couple of days ago, I should say, um, we had... A filing be made, essentially a complaint from Terraform Labs that cites Citadel as being or having a role in the collapse of UST. So if you guys want to find this article, we'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, obviously, we publish it at allincrypto.com. Terraform Labs blames Citadel Securities for UST collapse. A little bit of an introduction. Terraform Labs has recently made allegations against Citadel Securities, suggesting that the later player played a significant role in the collapse of Terra USD, UST stablecoin in 2022. This is the preliminary statement that they're essentially launching the allegations and the action against um, Citadel. Uh, obviously, we know the background, the allegations against Citadel Securities. Terraform Labs has pointed fingers at market maker Citadel Securities, accusing them of a um, concentrated intentional effort quotes, to cause the depegging of Terra's USD stablecoin. On October the 10th, Terraform Labs filed a motion in the United States District Court uh, in the Southern District of Florida. Through this motion, they sought to compel Citadel Securities to produce documents related to its trading actions around the time of the depegging. And you can see this is the um, sort of first page of the um, actual motion. So furthermore, Terra Labs has uh, presented publicly available evidence suggesting that Ken Griffin, the head of Citadel Securities, had intentions to short the stablecoin around the time of its depegging. This evidence included a screenshot from a Discord channel chat where a trader claimed to have had lunch with Griffin. Uh, during this alleged meeting, Griffin supposedly remarked they were going to Soros the F out of Luna UST, uh, possibly alluding to George Soros's trading strategies. Obviously, that's in regards to the Great British Pound. Um, this was obviously within the filing in a screenshot of a chat from a Discord channel provided during May 2022, uh, DPEG by Remy Teto. Uh, head of research at Global Macro Investors to Mara. It goes on to then essentially quote, I have lunch with Ken Griffin about twice a month. He was telling me over a nice ba bacon rib that they were going to Soros the F out of Luna UST. I'm not sure uh, how reliable that really is and what that means and is that hard evidence. I think the hard evidence would be them actually producing files around that time and if there is anything that suggests they had any involvement. 
However, it's worth noting Citadel Securities has previously denied any involvement in trading the Terra USD stablecoin during that period. Citadel Securities have been fined uh, recently, and it was actually remarked in the allegation. Uh, and that was, of course, by the South Korean financial regulators um, that imposed a fine of 11 billion, nearly 12 billion won, around $10 million uh, for the involvement in a um, biotech company. Um, the implications for Terraform Labs, of course, is that, you know, it, it, there's no sal sal salvaging Terra or, well, not I wouldn't say Terra because there are people that actually work on Terra, but UST uh, and the situation really. But, you know, it would certainly be interesting. And, and, and I think this is pretty big news that would reveal a lot of things. And I wonder how many other big players potentially have taken part in, in, in crypto. It's been quite a few rumors um, over the past week that a spot ETF is going to be approved soon. It will be approved. When exactly? I'm not sure. And what route does Bitcoin take in regards to the price action to get there? So going on to a bit of macro, um, you know, you guys know to do a bit of recapping that this week <clears throat> we looked at the possibility using um, the ones that we were right on, which was the S&P and gold, that risk generally was going to get a bid given how the dollar closed and the fact that it may want to turn around. You have had that for the stock market. S&P is a barometer in um, uh, blue. And then, of course, gold. Gold doing very well. Bitcoin, however, not so much. Uh, and I think that that's a representative of the fact that no one really wants to play. Remember, this is the adverse trade to Bitcoin, the dollar, and, of course, these other markets. And ultimately, with uncertainty, people flock to certainty, which, of course, is the dollar. Everyone's kind of, you know, you, you need the market. When the market starts to correct in this environment, people instantly go and you see it all the time on Twitter, right, this is it. This is the crash. The crash is here. That's not a market that people get excited about putting money into. Whereas it needs to turn and it needs to actually go on and put in new highs, i.e. Bitcoin 30K, gold taken out, it's, it's sort of uh, top end level. And of course, the S&P um, retracing this pullback before people get excited and start putting money on. The S&P will rally within 2% of its high two months prior to recession. I don't think we've got a recession yet. I think there's a while to come for that uh, in regards to the demand destructive event. Um, and we thought potentially you could get after this extended move for the dollar risk now coming back and we could start to sort of see that. Um, however, yesterday, given that inflation came out slightly higher than expected, core inflation really flat. Um, and of course, the Fed literally put zero dollars into the 30-year bond market. It was a really shocking sort of auction the dollar obviously gained strength so let's get rid of these uh, and let's go down into the individual markets you know if we drop this to the daily and you look at where the dollar bounced it's adverse to where risk bounced the question or where risk rejected the question is you know and you can see gold actually approaching its level uh, the question is what happens here you know you can see that you did get buyers and bidders coming in here Hopefully this pushes it to the upside, but we need to see really that dollar continue to come down. Um, the Fed really did telegraph yesterday that they aren't willing to do anything in regards to the bond market, despite the fact that it's getting smashed. I mean, it's looking like it wants to open up a little bit today, um, but this was really where markets caught a bid across the board. And this was on the back of Silicon Valley Bank and, and them knowing that the Fed were going to have to do something. Today, this continues to go down. There's a divergence between, you know, the likes of um, the stock market and bonds. Bonds have typically been very correlated with risks. Bonds have gone up. Risks generally gone up. Let's put this on a line chart to make it a little bit more simple. And let's put it on auto. Um, and now there's a bit of a kind of... Th th this market is very confusing, but the, the main sort of takeaways I think from yesterday were the fact that the Fed aren't willing to step in. Even though you didn't have much of a change really in the probabilities of them doing another hike in the next meeting the one after that did go up slightly um i think the fed's going to trade tread very carefully however because of the bond market however them coming in and saying right we're not even going to put in even a, a small bid whilst they're continuing to release a shitload of debt and bonds is just means more pain generally and that's of course bidding up the dollar and actually, you know, you can see this in your retail, in your um, interest sensitive markets, you can see actually real estate getting hit uh, rather hard. So 
This, of course, is all going to factor over into the crypto market. Going into Bitcoin specifically, you guys know that we do think crypto spring is well and truly here. And whether you need to do this or whether you just pick your feet up here, we think both lead to the same outcome. And that is that crypto spring is here moving in and out of crypto winter. Altcoins have been a pain. It's a shame for us because we've been so right on, on, on pretty much every single market um, and not being validated at all in the altcoins. You know, we um, essentially got back into the market here and altcoins have just done this. However, we do think this could pick its feet up. Um, it's just a question of when. Uh, and I think that that's going to depend on a lot of things, certainly the macro, which we've looked at. Bitcoin on the short term is still in a range. And you're literally in the center of this range. So I do have to apologize for this. I don't know whether you're going to come up here or whether you're going to go for that deeper correction. I think you're pretty much, it's 50-50. You could flip a coin. Um, but I do think that mid to long term, we are very bullish into a recession. You know, we think we're in your 2007 period, early 2007 going into 2008. If you look at what the markets did, people love to cite rates, but they don't actually, haven't actually studied them and, and, and how they work and actually... Uh, historically, when they stop upping interest rates, the stock market will go on and put in a new high before the demand destructive event. And this ties in with our kind of theory on laggard uh, effects of rates and so on and so forth. So we'll see what happens. It's just a case of watching and waiting. I can't really predict what way this is going to go until it happens. Um, what I will say is that Bitcoin showing not any kind of strength at the moment. That could change uh, and that you should always prepare for the worst. Um, but we'll see what happens. Gold getting a real bid today. Dollar's got to sort of see a little bit of weakness. I mean, there is the possibility that something with a dollar turns out like this and you end up getting a head and shoulders. But this is already a... I don't want to see that in a right shoulder. You know, you want to see weakness. You want to see it be smaller. It would really need to top out here and then uh, break and confirm. And then we would be looking at what we were speculating on on Friday, which was a potential term for the risk markets. Um, and that is really all I've got for you guys. Um, lots going on. We'll keep you up to date here over at All In Crypto. Uh, please do, uh, if you're not already following me on Twitter, check out real, at, real all in crypto doc, at Real All In Crypto. Go and check out allincrypto.com. We'll leave a link to this article in the description. And on that note, I'm going to love and leave it to you Fridays. Have a fantastic Friday, guys. See you in the next one.